Hi, Chem students. It's time for the third installment of our uh, salts and water treatment for general chemistry. And uh, here's a traditional type of problem you might see that covers all the bases of what we've been doing. And, and it's really just the simple question. What is the pH of a 0.22 molar solution of, and then I can throw at you a whole bunch of different types of things. Uh, in A, B, C, and D, it might be worthwhile at this moment for you to sit down, stop the video and say, what are those things? Are they acids, bases, salts, or, or something other? I keep asking you this over and over again because that is the skill. That's the first skill you must master before you can solve these problems easily on a test. So do that. Take a, take a second and uh, decide what, what you think these guys are. Acid, base, salt, or other. Okay, well, with that said, let's take a look at the first thing, A, HBRO. Well, hey, you know what? That's got a hydrogen as the first element. Uh, that makes it an acid. So this guy's going to be an acid right here. Um, then we go to B, KBRO. Well, that's got the BRO in it that we saw before, but it's got this potassium in front of it. So now we've got ourselves a salt. Okay, so this is no longer an acid. It's a salt of some sort. And then we look at the next guy, CH32, NH2. That's dimethylamine with an HCl attached to it. So that looks like it's some kind of salt as well because first off, it's not HCl. So that means it's gotta be it's something connected to a chlorine, it's a salt. Fantastic. And in D, what do we have there? We have lithium nitrate, that's a metal and, an, and a polyatomic anion, that's a perfect example of a salt. And each one of these now, each one of these salts, we could predict what the pH uh, range is going to be, whether it's going to be acidic, basic, or, so it's going to be acidic, basic, or neutral. So if I look at the first one, this has got the strong uh, cation, that's from potassium hydroxide, BRO- is from a weak, uh, a weak acid, therefore this thing's going to act like a base. Um, when I go to CH3, uh, the, the dimethyl amino chloride, the HCl is from a strong acid, and the dimethylamine is a weak base. Therefore, this is going to be an acidic type of substance. And then lastly, lithium nitrate, lithium hydroxide is a strong base, and nitric acid is a strong acid. This should be neutral. All right, so we've got that part down. Our next step is to, we're going to focus on this KBRO right here to do our next bit of work. Um, so we're going, to, we're going to focus right here on KBRO. What goes on with this? We, we, we looked at it in the last uh, section, but we, what, what's actually happening when we put this in water? So if I scroll down and give myself a little bit more room, I know that my KBRO, if I have some aqueous KBRO, it's going to break apart into ions because it's a salt, and it's a soluble salt that's a strong electrolyte. It's a strong electrolyte because of this strong piece right here. It's going to make K aqueous, K plus aqueous, and BRO minus. All right, so what I do know now is that either of these ions, or both, could potentially react with water to form an equilibrium with uh, its acid or base. So the question is, is potassium plus a conjugate acid of some base, or is BRO minus the conjugate base of some acid? Well, potassium uh, hydroxide is a strong base, therefore there is no equilibrium set up. Therefore, we can kind of ignore it. But the BRO minus, however, is from HBRO, and that's a weak, a weak acid, so there is an equilibrium. So we can immediately take this and say, aha, BRO, uh, BRO minus, that thing in water, can now further undergo a reaction with liquid water. And it's going to act like the conjugate base of the acid, so it's going to accept a proton. All right, so that proton's going to come from from the water there and give us HBRO plus OH minus. And thus we see why it's called a conjugate base. It produces OH minus, the hydroxide for us. Well, fantastic. That's all great. Now let's write the equilibrium constant. Well, when I write an equilibrium constant, I know this much, that if my system produces hydroxide, I need an equilibrium constant called K sub B. 
Well, the problem is I don't have case of B, and I can't even find it if I go look for it in a textbook. That's because there's a trick to getting it. It's not really a trick. There's a technique to getting it. And it's because of its relationship with HBRO that we can get there. So let me give myself a little bit more room, and I'll show you where this comes from. I want you to think about our two reactions that we can imagine with HBRO and BRO minus. We can imagine HBRO reacting with water to form H3O plus plus the BRO minus. We can also imagine what we just saw, which is the BRO minus reacting with water. And that's going to form for us the HBRO and the OH minus. Now, what we've just said is we know that this, re this reaction right here has a case of B associated with it. And another thing I know is that this has a case of A. And by the way, I can find this. It's 2.0 times 10 to the minus 9th. I can look that up in a textbook. But what if I was to add these two reactions together? What would I get? Well, the HBROs cancel on the opposite sides, the BRO minuses cancel, and I end up with this. Two water liquids make an equilibrium with H3O plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous. And you know what this is? This is the autoionization of water, and it has its own equilibrium const constant called K sub W. And it turns out that if I add reactions, when I add reactions, I'm going to multiply my K's, my equilibrium constants. That means that Ka times Kb must equal Kw. You need to put this little bird in your memory banks because you're going to use it to find the correct equilibrium constant for above. So in other words, we can, in this problem above, find our Kb it's no longer a question mark. It's equal to Kw divided by Ka. And Kw is a number you have to have in your head. It's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th at 25 degrees C. And since we're going to assume that's what the temperature is, this has got an equilibrium constant of 2.0 times 10 to the minus 9th. When I get done, I get 5 times 5.0 times 10 to the minus uh, 6th is my equilibrium constant. So at this point, I could, if I needed to, I could start to do an equilibrium problem, and we'll do that next. Uh, but before we go and do that, I'd like you, I'm going to clean up this mess here, and we're going to look at one more of these uh, to see if we can go through the same process again, uh, just to make sure we understand how to get the correct Ka for our, our system that we're playing with. Okay, so let's take a look at this particular reaction right here, this particular um, system, if it was in water. And mainly we're going to do this because a lot of people miss how to handle this. What we've got is this chlorine right here, this chloride, which will pop off and love to float around as a Cl- in water. So that's what's going to happen. If I have CH3 NH2Cl, aqueous. If I, if I let that, if I put that into water, it's going to break apart into ions. Now this is a salt. When I put that salt in water and it's a strong electrolyte because of that chloride right there, I'm going to get my CH3 NH2 plus plus a Cl minus. Now, just in case you're wondering how I know the charges, I know that chloride is going to be minus 1. I can look at the periodic table and just see that. It's, it's obvious from the periodic table that it needs one more electron to have that eight electrons around it, so it'll be all, all happy. So that leaves us with the other thing being positive. Why? Because both sides of this arrow, they have to have the same charge overall. All right. So for this, what would happen if we left this in water, well, the chloride, once again, is from a strong electrolyte. It's from HCl, a strong acid. Therefore, it's not going to react with water. It does not come from an equilibrium, but this guy does. So we can go ahead and write that equilibrium out, this hydrolysis equilibrium for this dimethyl ammonium ion. If I put that in water, 
it's going to react with that water as a conjugate acid. Why? This nitrogen now has no lone pairs. It can only act as an acid, and it can donate. It's a, a proton, one of that, that extra proton it has. It can donate that extra proton over to the water to form the dimethylamine and H3O+. And once again, this is right with what we said earlier. We said this is going to be an acidic solution, and it is. It's creating for us H3O+. All right, so that's this video. If you want to see this, uh, this, this uh, actual problem solved for the KBRO that we talked about earlier, then you should watch video four on the salt and water series.